Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to this session of my NPTEL course, Appreciating Linguistics or Typological Approach. So, let us uh, go back to the discussion of the very first uh, set of questions that I had in the previous slides. Um, I said we have to uh, following Moravzik's book um, introducing language typology, um, one of the developmental process can be traced by using articles as a tool. So, what do you think how did articles come into existence in history of language? So, a lot of cross linguistic distribution uh, of definite and indefinite articles have been studied. Um, Jakobsen, uh, Rumenek, Jakobsen, one of the one of the finest linguists um, that we have ever had. Uh, he says that languages differ essentially in what they must convey, not in what they may convey. So, th there is a difference between must and may. So, we, when, when we say a language A is different from language B, we must account for the solid differences that we observe through the empirical evidence or through the empirical data. So, if you assume something it may convey that does not really help us to find out the differences. So, when, when you were trying to figure out or when you were trying to understand um, articles, so the idea here is that you have to talk about or you have to find out what sort of difference they must convey. Okay? So, on this note, so let us see how um, the, um, the article story has been uh, talked about or has been discussed in typological literature. So, Jakobson's insight is borne out by the fact that many languages do not require that this distinction be made. They have no articles at all. For example, Russian, for example, Korean in Hindi, we do not have an article. So, in, so, considering some languages have articles, some languages do not have, this clearly shows that cross linguistically um, the presence of article is variant, it is varied. Right? So, it is clearly demarcated, it is clearly differentiated. One type that one type of language type A uh, which have articles, language language type B which the, the languages in this type which do not have articles and they are not overwhelmingly frequent. So, Dreyer, um, Dreyer sample of uh, if you look if you look for the numbers. So, Dreyer had this um, sample of 566 languages. And uh, out of this 566, uh, 337 have words or affixes functioning as definite articles and 41 of them have definite, but no indefinite articles. So, so 370, 337 plus 41, so that is the number of languages which might have articles or which have articles, but the rest they do not have. And uh, um, in the sample size of 473 that, that we discussed, um, less, than, less than half like 204 have indefinite articles right? and 81 have indefinite articles and no definite ones. So, there are two different samples we have, one sample 566 and in this 566, 337 have traces like have sorry have words or affixes that might function as definite articles. 41 do not have any definite um, sorry have definite, but no indefinite. Then another sample of 473 204 plus 81 that is the division. So, these are just some numbers I want you to um, look for. So, this cross linguistic distribution of articles does not allow either for unconditional statements like all or most or for implicational if x then what all the most languages have definite articles also have indefinite ones. So, this kind of striking convergence or this kind of cross linguistic um, distribution cannot be accounted for when you look at the numbers like this. So, then how we are going to um, going to sort of the how we are going to draw the cross linguistic generalization as far as the evolving or as far as the um, existence of articles are concerned. So, before that I just want you to uh, have some have uh, have a look on the data um, on the examples given over here. Um, in English, so the lack of non phrasal 
status of articles. I do not want this, I want that. Uh, that is okay, but when you say I do not want this, I want the, that is going to be bad. So, here the article, though it is a definite one, you cannot have a definite article without a noun. So, that is okay, but the would be bad. Now, look at 2a, these are nice apples, I want one of them. These are nice apples, I want an of them, that is going to be wrong, because though an would mean basically one, that is going to be ungrammatical, okay. So, non-phrasal status. So, when, when, you, when you look for an article, it must have a phrase, the pen, an, uh, like an apple, um, a book. So, it must be considered as a phrase. So, independently, uh, without considering it as a phrase, such kind of articles do not exist in English. And in case of suffixed articles, look at the languages like um, Bulgarian, Albanian and Romanian. So, um, troop at that means the body, cons at the horse, mek u in Albanian the friend, zal e the boy. So, u e at these are the affixes which or these are the suffixes which work like articles. So, these are two. Now, did you did you notice there are two different types of articles? cross linguistically which can be accounted for. One is definite, indefinite. Sometimes these, uh, sometimes these definite articles could be treated as or could be manifested as suffixes. So, uh, so English is one type, Bulgarian, Albanian and Romanian they would be the other type. Then the third, um, date, third set of data that we have here is Hungarian. In Hungarian example, the articles they lose their inflections of their ancestors. But eventually, what happens? They, they have the trace, but then the inflections are lost. So, the look at the Hungarian data, this apple and the apple. So, this apple is as and the apple is as. So, apple is al mat here and as ek et as then alma cat whatever, uh, I am not going to read this. So, when you said this and the, you see the inflection has been um, lost over here. So, as t, as ek t. So, this at in the in the acu apple accusative, this accusative and here it is the, here it is the. So, this this and that, that that accusation sorry that accusative marker or they are going they are basically losing um, the inflection mark over there. So, when you look at um, the history or when you look at the division of articles in different languages. Um, what sort of a generalization that we can draw. So, with just this much of this tiny bit of data, but I, I would expect you to go back and check more examples. So, now since we were talking about the um, initial, final and intermediate levels, what sort of uh, cross linguistic recurrent pattern we can draw um, from this initial and final uh, division. Okay. So, um, now let us look at the first generalization in connection with the articles. So, the first question that we are talking about as far as the diachronic perspective is concerned is that how, how do you think articles um, came into language, which whatever language might have it. Let us say indo aryan language, languages like Hindi and Odia, they do not have, but English does have it. So, I uh, will very briefly talk about what could be the possible pathway or what could be the possible process by which um, the, in, the definite and indefinite articles have been derived. Um, Let us think about um, two examples, uh, that man and the man versus the man. Semantically, generally um, they, they have similar kind of meaning, but not identical. So, that man is also definite, the man is also definite, but when I say that man, semantically it is a little different. Um, so, this gives us some idea probably the demonstratives like this, that, these, those and the definite articles like the, they might have some kind of connection and something similar situation or some similar scenario um, are also attested for indefinite articles. So, the that versus the, we can consider the English data. And let us say if we have a similar sort of thing for the indefinite ones. For this, I would um, like to add a bit of Turkish data. So, here um, in Turkish what happens, both the indefinite and the indefinite article and the numeral 1, they have the similar form, right. So, um, 
let us say even let us forget about Turkish, let us talk about English also. So, the same English data for the um, indefinite articles we can say one book and a book. So, do not you think they have some kind of connection? So, uh, this is just a uh, just a hint that indefinite articles might come like might have some connection with numerals like 1 and definite articles might have some connection with demonstratives. We will explore uh, more things in the book, but then that could that is just one set of uh, data that I want you to uh, focus on. However, and when I say the, the demonstrative that and the demonstra and the definite article the, they are similar, but not identical. So, for to, to understand this, let us look at the data given on the slide here. 1 a, I do not want this, I want that. I do not want this, I want the, that is ungrammatical. So, that means that and the, they might semantically similar, but they are definitely not identical. Same is the case with 2 a, these are nice apples, I want one of them, but I cannot say they these are nice apples, I want an of them, though the indefinite article an seems to be derived from the numeral 1. So, some kind of derivational link we can find it out, ok. And that is not the only thing that you need to remember that you need to remember as far as um, development of articles are concerned. There are also um, instances where you see the articles gradually are losing the segments like the phonological erosion is also happening ok. So, not only through the segmental levels, but also through the uh, so that the there is a segmental loss one on there is a segmental loss right. So, it is kind of the, that that is a lot that is uh, that is this is what we would call loss of segments, but besides that during the process of article development the phonological erosion is also happening, right. So, um, maybe I will I would uh, like you to uh, look at the data um, for Bulgarian and Albanian that I discussed a while ago. In this case also the because of the phonological erosion the articles have become just a suffix ok, they do not remain an independent morpheme anymore. So, look at that troop at. So, troop at it is not troop and at separately, at is a dependent morpheme. So, this is also an instance of uh, phonological erosion, right, or phonol reduction of the phonological form. Um, so, one thing is that segment erosion from that to the one to and the second one is the phonological reduction where the articles have become suffixes. Besides that, the article there are instances. Uh, when uh, where uh, the articles have also lost their morphological inflections. So, not only segment erosion, but also phonological erosion as well as the morphological erosion. So, what kind of morphological erosion is happening or and what sort of inflections the new articles are losing, you have to check the Hungarian data for that matter. Look at the Hungarian data in 6. So, this versus the, see as and versus as. So, the ter inflection is missing here as ek at. So, the it becomes just as. So, the, the plural inflection is missing and then the accusative marker is also missing. So, this as um, from as and as from as ect is also an example of morphological reduction. So, this is the pathway. So, if you go back the initial stage and the final stage and what are the different intermediate path or what are the different intermediate stages that the articles have been through. So, on this note we will we will go to the generalizations because whatever we are going to we are going to discuss now we have to focus on the four stages that or the four points that we discussed. So, what could have been the initial stage, what could have been the final stage, what are the intermediate stage and what could be the conditions of this change from the initial to the final ok. And remember we are discussing articles and we are trying to find out what could have been the initial stage of the article right. So, what is the generalization one says point A, point A is about initial stages. Let us read what is written here, 
it is written um, given a definite article it is likely to have arisen from a demonstrative that versus the, the is a definite article and the typological generalization is that if a language has articles and demonstratives both, so then very likely the definite article has come from the demonstratives. And given an indefinite article, it is likely to have arisen from the numeral one. So, some just like the, demon, the definite has, uh, has arisen from, de, uh, uh, from demonstrative, the indefinite has arisen from the numeral one. Right. So, the what was the initial stage? The initial stage was demonstrative, final stage is definite article. Initial stage is numeral 1, final stage is indefinite article um, and or a. Uh. And that is about the like the, uh, the point A. What does the point B says about the final stages? Given a demonstrative, it may change into definite article. So, demonstrative had certain features which resulted in the change or which resulted in the occurrence of definite article. Given a numeral one, it may change to an indefinite one. So, if you if a language has a demonstrative, it might result in a definite article. If a language has a numeral one, it might change it into the indefinite article. Okay? And so, so, the initial stage is demonstrative, final stage is definite. Initial stage is one, final stage is an or, or a. Now, once we decided uh, about the initial and the final stages, so what should be the intermediate ones? So, because both the uh, changes are instances of grammaticalization that is the change in the grammatical category. So, what are the, phon what are the mediary stages? There has been phonological change, semantic change and morphological change. So, change in the phonological level is, a is an intermediate stage, change of semantic level is an intermediate stage and change of morphological level is also an intermediate change. So, these are the intermediate stages going through that or demonstrative becomes definite and, uh, and um, a numeral one becomes indefinite. So, this is the pathway. Then now, the fourth point is what are the conditions, what could be the reasons why such kind of changes happened. So, there are two reasons primarily one. Um, no, not two. The, there are one. There is primarily one reason that is language contact. Because of the language contact, this might trigger or accelerate the development of articles. So that's the that's the story of articles that we have um, in our uh, typological literature. So let's recall. Let's summarize it. For us, we have to find out four points of cross linguistic recurrent generalizations. The first point is about initial stage, second is about final stage, third is the intermediate stages and fourth is the conditions that we have to talk about. As far as the articles are concerned, the initial stages um, are demonstratives and the, in, uh, the definite articles are derived from the demonstratives. Indefinite articles are derived from the numeral one. So, what are the final stages? Demonstratives have some quality which may change into definite article and numeral 1 has some quality which might change into indefinite article. So, that is the initial and the final. What are the intermediate stages? Phonological changes, semantic changes and morphological reduction as in Hungarian, phonological changes as in English, semantic changes also as in English uh, the data that or Romanian data also we had. So, these kind of changes are there in the intermediate stages. And what could be the possible reason why these changes are happening? This is being triggered or accelerated by the development of articles, oh, sorry by the, uh, th this has been triggered or accelerated because of the language contact. So, how language contact leads to language change? Articles are one of the finest examples. Okay?